Sandy May, thank you so much. It is 717. Last week, the Environmental Protection Agency and the Biden administration announced the first national limit to PFAs or forever chemicals in our drinking waters. We want to bring in Dr. Brian Staley uh, from the National Nonprofit Environment and Education Foundation. Dr. Staley, good morning to you. Good morning, Marissa. How are you? I am great. Uh, let's begin with the, the newest legislation, but also what PFAs are. Sure. These are man-made chemicals, uh, per and polyfluoral alkyl substances, uh, better to say forever chemicals that rolls off the tongue easier. But these are in hundreds of consumer products, including dental floss, uh, food packaging, and even toilet paper. And so um, they're everywhere and even been detected on both uh, poles on the globe. It's so interesting you mentioned that because I always think of just drinking water, but they, I mean, pizza boxes, takeout containers, they're really all, in almost everything. Uh, talk about the limits that will be placed. Sure. So the EPA, as of the thousands of, of PFAS compounds that are out there, this particular legislation focuses on six, um, two of the, the legacy compounds that are designated PFOA and PFOS have limits of four parts per trillion in drinking water. So it certainly is a way to help reduce exposure to those potential detrimental health effects we all may experience from PFAS. Mm. What are those health effects and, and why are they dangerous or, or, or can be potentially? They can be, and many of the studies that have been done have been done at much higher concentrations. And so what those studies have suggested is that uh, cancer, uh, particularly kidney cancer and testicular cancer of, are of particular concern, but there are other types of uh, problems like developmental effects and reproductive effects that can uh, potentially be a concern when we're, when we're exposed to PFAS. I read also that it can impact the immune system and your ability to, to fight off and ward off diseases. So my next question, and I know if you can answer this, Dr. Staley, uh, why did it take so long to get these limits in place? Well, in, in, in many respects, uh, there there have been uh, there has been debate around the public health aspect of things. How concerning are these particular compounds? Um, in many respects, one could say this legislation is really a band aid because the exposure that we get as as humans, um, really, drinking water is one of three primary sources. We also get exposure from inhalation as well as ingestion. So there's a lot of work still to be done. And where can people go to stay connected to you as well as your nonprofit? I know that you all do a lot of work in this space and are continuing uh, to do so. Right. A lot of our work is focusing on controlling PFAS in the downstream infrastructure that's designed to protect human and health in the environment. And you can find us at www.erefdn.org. All right. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Brian Staley from the National Nonprofit Environmental and Education Foundation. We appreciate it. Thank you.